Hey guys, welcome back. It's Kabezon here. I'm going to be starting a two-part series focusing on if we could survive a Covenant attack today. To best understand that scenario, I feel like we first must explore how the Covenant would actually attack, what weapons they would use, and what effects they would have. Obviously, if you've ever been around the Halo series, you know that the Covenant primarily relies on plasma-based weapons. So this week, we're going to start with that. We'll take a deep dive in how plasma-based weapons realistically could work, what comparable technologies are out there, and how devastating their effects would really be. I'd like to do a quick plug. As a small-time creator, I've only been making videos for a few months. You guys' support really does go a long way. If you find this entertaining, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help me out. All right, let's talk about plasma weapons in the Halo universe. Keep in mind, a lot of this, as it's explained in the lore, is a bit jargony. And that's not a knock against the authors, nor is it a knock against the games. You have to keep in mind when you're world building for a science fiction universe using technologies that we don't understand completely today, you kind of have to make it up as you go. I'll do my best to explain how it is explained in the lore, and then we'll touch on how it realistically could happen later. The Covenant as we know use salvage Forerunner parts largely to enhance their own technology, and that's true for their weapons as well. They use Forerunner pieces to generate plasma. Most of their weapons have an upper and lower assembly. Something like the plasma rifle, it's more obvious. They alternate when firing. It's hinted at but not explicitly said that they use magnetic poles to eject the plasma and have a sort of bolt. It's said that they're efficient, but they are prone to overheating. The main kill mechanism, at least explained in the Halo Encyclopedia, is thermal shock as well as a bit of a kinetic load carried by the plasma itself. The plasma is contained via magnetic fields, and when the Covenant use it, sometimes it's in pulses like a plasma rifle and sometimes it's a continuous beam, like when a ship is glassing a planet. Speaking of ship-based weaponry, the lore is kind of gone back and forth regarding things like plasma turrets, plasma torpedoes, and plasma cannons. In earlier variations, it was just pure plasma. Think like the Eric Nyland era of the lore. Think like Bungie. In later renditions under 343, it would start to be described as torpedoes with an inert core in a magazine that would be excited and ejected via like a silo, and it, it was more of a traditional torpedo that would carry that plasma load to destroy a ship. So that's how Halo describes it, but what can we find comparable in the real world? Well, there's a few different technologies that kind of made up with what the intent is behind the Covenant's weapons. Lasers, plasma weapons, and particle accelerators. Now, all of this is bleeding edge technology. I don't have a doctor. I've taken a few physics courses back in high school before I dropped out. So I'll do my best to explain as I understand it. For some of this stuff, if you find it interesting, I'd recommend taking a deeper dive in academic studies online as well as other YouTube videos that really get into the nitty gritty physics behind everything. All right, let's talk about plasma weapons. Well, you have Project Marauder. This was a early 1990s project by the United States Air Force to develop plasma-based weapons. Because plasma is typically less dense than gas, i.e. it's super high, it expands, unless it's being contained by a magnetic field, it kind of it quickly loses its integrity. To keep the plasma intact, the project created a toroid, which is kind of like a donut. These toroids are stable, much like blowing a smoke ring, because it spins incredibly quickly around its radial axis. So that allows fluid one, in this case the dense plasma, to remain intact as it spins through the fluid around it, in this case the atmosphere. Approaching it from this method allowed them to create a plasma projectile that only weighed 1 to 2 milligrams, but it moved at 3% the speed of light and it carried the punch of 5 pounds of TNT. The thermal effects were described as devastating, and that's because, think about it, if it hits your body, the water in your blood and organs would vaporize, and water is incompressible, so when you have a lot of gaseous water vapor inside of you, you quickly turn into red mist, which I know is very graphic and morbid, but that's just being true. Much like lightning is striking a tree, you know, even metal, people, organic objects like plants would explode or catch fire immediately. On top of the explosive effect of plasma, the free electrons, because you know plasma is, is ionized, the electrons kind of move freely like a soup, those would enter any sort of electronic system, even if it wasn't destroyed by the thermal effects, causing things like overcurrent, like basically frying it. There was another technology that came on a little bit before than the 1980s. It was part of the Strategic Defense Initiative, aka Ronald Reagan's Star Wars programs. This was the X-ray pumped laser. It was a concept for anti-ballistic missiles, and the way it worked is you had to have these rods, and inside these rods would be a nuclear warhead, and this is out in space. Those rods would point towards launching ballistic missiles from the Soviet Union. 
the nuclear warhead would detonate. The gamma rays would be absorbed by the rods, which would excite them at an atomic level substantially. The absorbed gamma rays would cause the rod to emit an extremely focused and bright X-ray laser from the tip. That X-ray laser would hit the launching missiles, and causing them to explode. The thing, though, is it takes an immense amount of power. That's why they were using nukes. But still, it was about a one megaton nuke just to destroy one incoming missile. And these lasers could only penetrate about 19 miles into the atmosphere in the best case circumstance. And keep in mind, space doesn't technically start until 50 miles, and that the atmosphere closest to the surface tends to be the thickest, most humid, nice and soupy. And because of that, the laser would not be able to penetrate all the way down, not without substantially more power. Last but not least are particle accelerators. There's actually been a circumstance where particle accelerator, a worker was inside it when it fired. It went through his skull. He lived without any kind of serious effects, but it's largely because the particles are so small. But that could be scaled up to be more of a weapon. All right, let's tie it together. How can we take what the Covenant's intent was in their design with real world weapons? Well, like I said, plasma bolts, as described in the lore, not realistic. But if you had a self-contained field that was more stable, like a toroid in Project Marauder, now that is reasonable. And the Covenant with their advanced technology and stuff like that could make weapons that could hold in your hand like I said, just instead of a blue bolt, it would be a very bright blue donut of hate that when it touches you would cause you to burst into steam like War of the Worlds. For ship-based weaponry, this is the one that's kind of the most disappointing and the hardest one to rationalize. There's no way, by my understanding, for a plasma lance or beam to really work. There's just no way to contain that beam with electromagnetic field and have it stay kind of intact and coherent all the way to the surface. I mean, you gotta keep in mind the sun is massive and it frequently ejects we call solar flares coronal mass ejections our magnetic sphere protects us from that type of stuff so if you're trying to glass us from orbit you're having to punch your way through that same magnetic sphere which is able to absorb massive loads so to speak from the sun on a relatively frequent basis i just don't think it's feasible nor do i think you're able to create some sort of magnetic channel that allow the beam to stay focused the, all the way down the flip side is you don't need to do any of that there's alternatives extremely powerful lasers would meet the covenant's intent and it's actually ironic because the byproduct of incredibly powerful lasers in atmosphere is atmospheric blooming. It's actually a bad thing because what happens is the atmosphere starts to absorb some of the thermal loads from the laser. It turns to plasma. And so you would have a beam of plasma hitting the surface, but instead of plasma being the intent, it would be a byproduct of an incredibly focused and powerful laser. The problem with the plasma being generated in atmospheric blooming is it diffuses the energy of the laser. But if you really think about it, that's not going to be an issue to the Covenant because they're trying to glass the planet, right? They're trying to destroy humanity and all living life. The atmosphere absorbing that much heat eventually is going to cause you know, stuff like the oceans to boil over, combustible material like buildings and wood would catch on fire. Now, I haven't run, you know, a model or done the math, but I don't think you need to glass an entire planet like what we see in the books and in the games. I think you can get away with glassing as little as a third of a planet before the latent heat of all that energy would cause the atmosphere to heat to a point where life would no longer be sustainable on the surface, which is grim, but that's uh, just the reality of it. So that's how the Covenant would fight. Right. Those are the types of weapons we can expect. How would we be able to defend against it? Well, that's what we'll talk about next week. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and hopefully it's bringing you some entertainment. Hope you, everyone has a happy New Year's. I myself am suffering from a bit of a cold, hence why I may sound a little bit congested on the mic. I'll be better next week, fingers crossed, and get out another video. Take care and be safe.